Hey everybody, final thoughts time for Kalis Magna Carta, which I think I said at some point in this run through and kind of, and you might have thought it was some sort of weird fever dream, but as far as we're concerned, Kalis Magna Carta destroys Kalis. It does almost everything Kalis does. There's a little bit of stuff left out of Kalis that the Magna Carta cuts, although you can add it back in with the Kalis Magna Carta expansion, if you want to, the uh, you know the special bonuses and whatnot you can get for contributing to the castle, so you can get most of that back. But even without that, uh, you know this is a very very rich and compelling worker placement game that has the tiniest footprint. I mean, when we go on vacation, we basically pack this entire game up in just a couple little um, you know plastic cases or a couple of baggies. This game, the the weight to size ratio is off the chart. It is absolutely brilliant. This game is as heavy as a good solid mid-weight you know, worker placement euro, but an incredibly tiny one because, of course, the board itself is made out of cards, and that just works so well. Um, you know, actually, it's a shame. It could be even more compact if instead of having all these cubes, because it comes with a lot of cubes, everybody had a card with just like a little cube marker, and then they could keep track that way. But it is nice to have cubes, and even still, it's it's still a pretty small package. And why do I say we like this more than Kalis? Be two things. One, the provost. We hate the provost. We, you know, whether even if you're not necessarily going to be mean, that constant threat looming. I mean, you, know, you put a new building out, you're so excited you want to use it. You better not use it. You better wait a turn or two, or else you're taking a really big risk. Unless you've got a lot of money and um, you're willing to go last so that you can make sure that constant threat hanging over our heads, we just can't stand it. I mean, we just hate everything about it. Um, and then on top of that, the fact that the Provost is there is, is an extra money sink for this game. He really does slow the game down because without him, and that's the thing, I love the fact that this game supports getting rid of the Provost is as easy as doing that. And then so long, pal. Off he goes. And now, you know, more money is injected. Just a tiny bit. But in this game, when money is so tight, a tiny bit of money makes goes a long ways. It, it basically, basically, you know, injects up more cash into the simulation so you can get up and running much, much quicker. Uh, with, with the Provost, you know, because you're having to, you know, a lot, a certain amount of money or always stay away from the most recent buildings, the game does take a bit longer. And, you know, not a lot longer, but it feels like it does. It, it, the game has a slower start. Without the Provost, things just, you know, you know get up to full speed much, much quicker because of the extra cash and the ability to always move. And, you know, building a building is always still a very, very tense thing anyway because you know if you build a building, you're giving everybody else the chance to use that building first. And maybe you want to use that building because, yeah, it's great. If they use it, you get a side benefit, but maybe you want the really big benefit. So, there's still tension, but without just like constant, looming, total jerkwad tension, which we absolutely hate. And then, like I said, there's more money. But then the other thing, the thing that um, we dislike about Kalis, maybe even more than the Provost, probably not, but almost as much as the Provost, is the fact when you sit down to play Kalis, it's almost always the exact same game every time. You know, it it's, has very little in the way of variable setup. You always have the exact same buildings laid out the exact same way. You have the same overarching... Um, paths to victory, and everything is just kind of predetermined. Now, there's a little bit of randomness because the order of the, of the start tiles can make a bit of a difference. Not a huge difference, but a bit of a difference. More of a difference if you're willing to use the, uh, the uh, Provost aggressively, of course. But even still, um, you know, Kalis, for the most part, has very, very little in the way of random variability setup. This game, every time you start playing the game, you're starting with three cards in your hand, and that's all you can build. And that means every time you play the game, the game is going to evolve in a radically different way because of the limitations the players have based on their hands that, you know, the, the, and you know, the, based on the cards they draw. And that just adds so much more life, and for us anyway, replayability. I've talked about this in other run-throughs, about how we really don't appreciate games with um, zero, you know, with zero or near zero variable setup stuff because, you know, we only ever play two-player. And with more players, if you play with three or four or five or however many, whatever your, your game supports, um, fixed setups can work better because the more players you have around the table, the more variables are going to get fed into the equation. The more random seeds of chaos are going to mix things up and help ensure that the game is going to play differently every time. But if you play 99.9% .9 of all your games with the exact same person, um, 
you will find, at least Jen and I find, as this is true for us anyway, that you will get into a rut. If you have a game that has the exact same setup, you will start getting into patterns and you know, um, paths. Or at least, again, I'm not saying you will necessarily, but we do. And that's why we really always look for something that gives us that extra little goose, that little, um, you know, that little push into pushing to, into pursuing different paths because of what our starting hand of cards is or because of the random setup of the board. And so Kalis, Magna Carta, with the ability to get rid of the Provost, yay, hallelujah, and the ability to have radically different variable setups just makes it fantastic. And then on top of that, super tiny footprint, for a very, very thinky game. And then one other benefit as well. You know, this is not something Jen and I have ever had use for, but maybe it will someday. The game, I was just showing you the standard rules, which includes the Provost. The game also comes with beginner rules. The whole other half of this manual is devoted to beginner rules. In the beginner game, you get rid of the Provost. Again, yay! You also get rid of several building cards, the more complex ones, and the rules for building prestige buildings change. You don't have to have a lawyer and then use a lawyer to get an income house and then use uh, an income, you know, demolish an income generating house to build a prestige. You know, this one, two, three that, be that becomes part of your overall arc as you play this game. You know, what, what, um, what income uh, generators are you going to sacrifice to be able to get you know, more prestige points. In the basic game, you can just build prestige points like you build any other building. The lawyer is taken out. You don't have to demolish residential buildings anymore. And the game is just super streamlined. I'm not going to say it's a full-on gateway of the same level of Ticket to Ride, but I do think it becomes a game when you play at the beginner level that if, if you've got a willing audience that you could use as a gateway if they're really into it, you know, if, if they're, if, I mean, and, and that's something that could happen. If you're traveling with other people who maybe aren't as hardcore gamers as you, Kalis Magna Carta in the beginner mode is still an interesting and, you know, compelling experience for a gamer, but it's much more likely to be something that you could play with somebody, hey, you know, yeah, that was a lot of fun. You know, Dixit is a game we usually take on vacations as well. That was really fun. You want to play a, a, a heavier game? It's a bit more, it's a bit more, mature, it's a bit more thinky, it's a bit more heavy, yeah, okay, let's give it a try. And you'll, it, it, you could potentially have a nice one-two punch because if you, if you play the beginner game. And I think that's wonderful that the game, it has a beginner game. But for us, we just absolutely adore the game played standard but without the Provost and just love it. I have to admit, we have never actually played with the expansion that adds this whole board. There's like kind of an area majority thing going on over here that as you make more contributions to the castle, you can unlock special powers that you have for the rest of the game. I really love the idea of this. I'd love to try it, but unfortunately, one of the special powers is being able to move the provost for free. And like, ah, well, we don't want to play with the provost. So I've never really gotten around to figuring out a way to make this work if you're not going to play with the provost. So that's as an aside. If anybody has any good ideas, by all means, let me know. But that's it, folks. That's Kalis Magna Carta. Stellar, stellar game. William Attia, the designer of the base game, he, you know, as far as I'm concerned, he took the already incredibly important and influential game um, and streamlined it and honed it to to razor sharp perfection. This game is rock solid. And uh, that's it. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, as always let me know. If I made any goofs, I'm sure I did along the way. By all means, please point them out. Unless they've already been pointed out, check the show notes and see if Paulo did it first. And otherwise, that's it, folks. Thanks for watching. Talk to you later. So long. Bye-bye.